Hey, how's it going everybody? Um, so you guys know that we've had our Tesla Model Y for over a year, right? So we ordered it in August of last year and we took delivery in September. So we're about a week shy of a year, in fact, about 12,000 miles on the car. It's been a great experience so far. In fact, we've loved every bit of it. Now I was probably a little biased. I was a little more excited than my wife was when we got it, but she quickly adapted and loved it. Loved the vehicle. Uh, you know, the driving excitement, the thrill, the acceleration that you get with it, the room, the space, the comfort, everything all together makes for a fantastic drive, a fantastic vehicle, and a fantastic experience. You know, in general, I had a lot of trepidation coming into it. I was nervous about certain things. First time all EV, no doubt. Certainly had some questions about it. And then I had some challenges with it in the beginning too. Charging it, where to charge, road trips, range, all that kind of stuff. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about five things that uh, you know a lot of people are concerned about with them. People ask me all the time on my forums. They ask me about these specifically. I want to talk about these things to say, like uh, you know, looking back on it after a year, kind of a year in review, how these five things actually impacted me. So sit back, relax. You guys are watching the Tall Tesla Guy. So like I said, the five things after a year, first is always going to be range, right? Tesla Model Y has the most range of any EV, save for the Model S, but Teslas in general, any EV in the market globally. There's no other car that comes even close. Now there are other cars that are promising more range, um, the Pulsar, the Lucid Air, but they're not out yet. They don't even have a prototype out yet, right? They've seen people, they're testing it, they're making it, they're promising it, but where is it? So the only thing that's even there now that you can physically go buy, now granted Teslas are delayed, so you're gonna be waiting before you take it home with you, but you can physically buy with over 300 miles of range, it's gonna be the Tesla. Tesla Model Y, the one we have, 326 miles of range. Now we can get into the debate about actual range, usage, all that kind of stuff, but 326 starting, even at 277, which is what I found on one of the range tests I was doing um, a few months back, you know, is well more than any other EV out there. So if you take that in consideration, range was a major consideration for me, something I was concerned about, you're kind of winning with a Tesla right from the beginning. But compared to my gas vehicle, we had a, kind of a unicorn. We had a, a Volkswagen Passat. Now it's not, a, it's not the, the debate about the fantastic car. It's not like it's a top of the line vehicle or anything like that. We enjoyed it, it worked out great for us. But in my experience, we got almost 500 miles of range on a tank of gas. Now a tank of gas costs about 40 bucks, 30 depending on the price. And that was about once a week because we were driving it a lot more, all that kind of stuff. But that aside, you know, outside of that particular car, most cars aren't going to give you 500 miles of range. In fact, we just recently purchased a Jeep Wrangler, something a super fun vehicle to drive, which was important to myself and my wife. Uh, a lot of fun anyway. And we get about 290 miles. It's certainly a lighter vehicle than our Tesla was by quite a bit. Tows about the same amount, all wheel drive, just the same. Uh, four-wheel drive anyway on the Jeep, but under 300 miles of range. Now that's a little bit closer to probably real-world range, but you know, a real-world range test, driving how I normally drive, got about the same amount of range as the Jeep did. Now granted the Jeep can fill up, essentially charge at any gas station, and the Tesla obviously can't. However, the Tesla supercharging network is there. Any road I wanted to drive on, I had a Tesla supercharger anyway, and I charged it at home. I spent about 30 bucks a month charging my Tesla versus 30 bucks a week filling the car up. In fact, it was 45 filling the Jeep up last week. So, you know, that alone, the range is definitely a consideration. But in reality, once I started making some comparisons, it was nothing. It was there. So then we talked about the cost, right? Now, the Tesla is a more expensive vehicle. It's definitely not free, but none of them are really. In fact, we're finding that a lot of vehicles are comparable in price. And you're gonna find that the costs are similar. Like I said before, 30 bucks a month to charge a Tesla, 30 bucks a week to fill up gas in the car, right? In the gas vehicle. Now that varies depending on the kind of vehicle that you have, but 30 bucks nonetheless. So $120 for the gas vehicle or 30 bucks a month for the Tesla. Now there was no annual maintenance at all with the Tesla, nothing. No oil changes, no top the fluids off other than windshield washer fluid, because you know it's an all electric vehicle. Now, we got lucky, our car was perfect, basically. We didn't have a lot of flaws in the paint, we didn't have a lot of panel gaps, we didn't have any issues with the technology, any issues with the system, even though it's covered under warranty, it's an inconvenience nonetheless. We didn't have those problems to start with anyway, so we lucked out. We lucked out great, a great deal with our Tesla. And I guess that's not everybody's experience, but 
you get the same kind of experience with a gas vehicle too. You either get a great one or a bad one. Now there's, uh, you know, some of the legacy automakers have a better record or a track record of producing the vehicles that are more consistent, maybe. But uh, in general, it's kind of a luck of the draw nonetheless. Now we're getting lucky with the Jeep too. It's working out great for us. But in general, the Tesla, our Tesla Model Y has been fantastic. We haven't had any major issues. And on a simply cost comparison, the destination charge, the $1,200 you pay for the Tesla, it was $1,400 for the Jeep. So, you know, not to say that a Tesla and a Jeep are the same thing. I'm not trying to compare them like that, but just talking about a recent experience, right? So you're paying that nonetheless. The taxes are going to be the same. It's based on how much you paid for the car anyway. Uh, and I know with a Jeep, I don't want to pay all these, you know, exorbitant EV des or EV registration fees because my state doesn't have any sort of EV credits that I did with the Tesla. So it's saving a little bit of money there. But in general, I'm making up for it with the Tesla and the fact that I can charge it. Supercharging is a lot cheaper than gas is. Per gallon, we spent about $7 to go from 12% to 80% at a supercharger recently. And I know that from 12% gas in the tank to 80% gas in the tank is definitely more than $7. We paid 45 for the Jeep to fill it up. So, you know, the cost alone, it seems like it's cheaper with the Tesla. It was something I was concerned about in the beginning. It was the first question I had with my friends, how much do you pay to, char to charge it? And, you know, looking back on it, I can say that it's almost inconsequential. So this next thing is something that uh, a lot of people have this concern with. And in reality, if you're looking for the problems, you can find them, right? I can comb through, the, comb through our Model Y and I can find issues with the paint that I didn't see before, you know, panels on the inside that weren't painted perhaps, or I can find uh, gaps here and there, stuff like that, but they're there if you look for them. Well, in reality, I look at my Passat, which again, I know it's not the same kind of caliber as a Tesla, but it's just the other car that I have. I know that Volkswagen is a legacy auger maker that's been doing it for a long time. They should have their process down by now. And I can find panel gaps there. I can find alignment issues there. I can find paint issues. I can find interior panels that weren't painted there either. Our brand new Jeep Wrangler. If you'd think they would have that process down by now, but I can find issues. I can find overspray with some of the paint. I can find some of the panel gaps, the noise inside the car, stuff like that, that um, you know people are always talking about with Tesla. And so I was probably paying attention to it more than even my wife was for sure. So I was looking for these problems in the beginning and I did find them, but we got really lucky with our Tesla. So what about the quality of the vehicles? Yeah, our, our, our VIN is about a 39, it's up to, 149 now, something like that. So, you know, we were sort of in the beginning, but not the first one by any means, right? Not even close. So you've got, um, you know, we lucked out a little bit there, I think. And in general, the build quality of the cars, I think they're getting better. I think they're figuring it out. I think the double pane windows are making it quieter inside. Uh, I noticed the road noise in the very beginning and then I quickly forgot about it. In reality, like the acceleration and the fun to drive the vehicle, uh, you know, eclipses anything, any issue you're, you're kind of hung up on. And that was something coming into the car that I was kind of concerned about. And I can happily say that it quickly, uh, you know, dissipated as I moved forward. I just love driving the vehicle so much. I love the experience behind the wheel that um, those little things just didn't get me. You know, things like um, the interior space, which is actually my number four, right? The interior space in the car and the Tesla, for somebody that's 6'5", you know, a little bit taller, not the tallest, but I'm, I'm taller. You know, I've just got a lot of like arms and legs and everything like that. And I just have plenty of shoulder room. I have plenty of arm and my legs, they're not wrapped around the steering wheel, which is really nice. It's a really comfortable drive. The seats in the car are super comfortable. And I'm finding that other vehicles it just doesn't have that. Now you can get super premium cars. I know, you know, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, maybe, um, you know, you get something crazy like that. You're gonna pay that much more for it. And you might have a, a heated, cooled seat that's got, you know, massaging and you don't have anything like that into heated seats, but nothing uh, cooled anyway in the Tesla. But really like that's what you're paying for with that, I guess. And you're not paying for it with the Tesla, you're paying for the technology essentially. And so with that in mind, coming into the car, I was nervous about it. I was nervous that it wasn't gonna be comfortable and I can happily say that I, that I am. That as soon as I got it, after the first couple of weeks, I realized that first road trip that I wasn't as tired as I normally am. I enjoyed the drive to the point where I miss it when I'm not driving which is an odd experience for me. So, so things like that were, were quickly passed up. They went away fast and you know, smoke in the air, they were gone. And I can happily say that it's not a problem. It's not something that, that bothers me. And then you go into the storage. So the Tesla Model Y has more storage than any comparable size vehicle that I've found, right? Two sub trunks in the back, these super deep wells on the sides. You lay the, the seats flat, 73 cubic feet of space, which is huge. 
put the dog in the back. He's a large golden retriever and he fits great. I can tell you that. He fits perfect in the car. It's great. He can move around. He can lay down. He can sit up. All that kind of stuff. He fits great in it. So that was something that we were really considered about the space. I wanted to have enough room for everything that comes with a baby, everything that comes with ourselves driving around, everything that comes with a dog. And I can happily say that we found that with our Tesla. We found it with our Model Y to the point where I would sell it today and buy another one today. So it always asks, you know, would you buy it again? Absolutely. You know, the 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 used car market is going crazy. So that might be the road that we take. Might be, you know, put it up for sale if we can get a good price for it and then order a new one right away. In fact, I'd order it right now because it's about four months till you get it. But, um, you know, just a couple of things to think about, a couple of things to consider. You know, I'm happy to share my experiences. That, that's what I hope you guys are getting from this journey. I just wanted to talk about everything that we've experienced so that you can have, you know, make a better buying decision perhaps, or you can come into the experience with less, uh, you know, trepidation and you won't be as nervous getting it because you know that, um, you know, kind of what we've been through. And I know not everybody's 6'5", but, um, you know, the, the height of it or the extent of it, and then it fits for everybody else in between. So, hey, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos that I put out there, but it lets me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. You know, I hope you guys are uh, having a fantastic day, week, month so far, and that you're staying safe out there. Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you have a great day.